And we are back here with the lower bracket. I mean, there is no technically no official upper and lower bracket, but what amounts to the lower bracket final, the game for ninth spot here at EQC Division 2 in lovely Warszawa Polska. My name is Richard Tokovic. And my name is Sheila Brüchling. Yeah, we have a matchup here between the Basel Basilisks from Switzerland and Malacca Vikings from Spain. Interesting to see the Swiss team here. They were um, not getting many wins on the first day, but two wins today against Dublin Dr. Dragons and Hafnia Harpies from Copenhagen were enough to put them in this game versus Malacca Vikings, who had a very, very difficult schedule on the first day and now have plowed their way into the lower bracket finals. Um, what do we expect from this game, Chula? What would you say? I think it's very difficult to say, especially Malaka being a late addition to the tournament. They yes, came true, true, yeah. in a bit later. Um, Basel, they're unsure. They were unsure of their own chances at this tournament, but yeah. I would definitely say they're making the most of it with this game. And we're off. And Quaffel possession goes to Malaka. Larger control goes to Basel, though. Always First surprise here. First surprise here. It's always, it is it's always interesting when they start off on opposite sides. It makes it a bit oh more, yeah, more exciting as a start, I feel. It's also, if we have mentioned Basel. We're also a little bit unsure. They qualified a little surprisingly at their own qualifying tournament in Switzerland, getting the EQC spot over Turicum Thunderbirds last from Zurich, last year's qualifications. And, well, so people didn't expect much from them. And the first they seemed to prove them right. But here they are in the ninth place game. So they must be doing something right. Currently, we see Basel beating out the Malaka beaters, trying to clear the way for their chasers. Will they be able to get through here? And that is... First score going to Basel, Basilisks. That was number 77, uh, Karina Zilla. Oh, formerly of Ruhr Phoenix. A woman from the pot. Awesome. <laughs> and that makes it the first goal, Malaka Vikings nil. Basel, Basilisks 10. Certainly not the start we anticipated. Fun facts from Basel, we asked for some pronunciation tips on their names, but they were unwilling to give them, saying it would be more fun if we mispronounced their names on stream. I mean, Swiss German is sort of a different language altogether, so even though I am German speaking, as you can obviously tell, um, <laughs> this, this, this will be a challenge. Okay, so currently we see Malaka in Quaffle possession, getting their chasers in position, trying and creating some passing options. But Basel having bludger control are giving them a hard time. Reset. No. Oh, oh, wonderful. Great long pass, great troll positioning, yeah. and an immediate score after the catch. The always the trouble with pressing is you leave your defense open potentially. It's what lost Germany their game versus Austria at European J Games in Oslo. A game I will never fail to mention at any possible point. But that's basically how you do it. You just pass into the... Oh! And a great yeah, save there awesome. by Malaka. So that means Malaga 10, Basel 10 equal uh, shots, goals, opportunities, everything equal. We are currently two minutes into the game. <laughs> Malaga trying slowly. It is still against Bludger Control, so no, no need and no possibility to rush. And the Bludger Control has switched to Basel. No Bludgers. Uh, let's switch to Malaga. And, oh, and gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous goal. Another amazing pass, catch, and goal. Number seven, Jesus. He's always angry even if we win a tournament. Is the info they gave us. Well, so that means he probably will also be angry if they just win the lower bracket. Some marvelous pressing here by the Spanish team. And Basel now moving up the pitch, having crossed the midline, making a run for yeah, it. Yeah, that was e that was and too easy. Beat. But some very good beating here by both beater pairs, actually. Like both Basel have regained bludger control. Lots of possession being yeah. being swabbed. If you're if you're a beater yourself, uh yeah, you'll enjoy this game. That's how it seems, at least right from now. Basel seems to be making a very tight defense, very much in their keeper zone, close to their hoops, making it extra hard for Malaka to get through. Good beating here by Basel, and that is an opportunity for Malaga, apparently. And it is a goal for Malaga. Oh, no goal, no good. Uh, beat before, I'm assuming. And the ball has gone off pitch. And so Basel keep the ball, yeah.
Basel Basilisk's team colors actually green and white. You wouldn't be able to tell that from the jerseys. A big Basilisk's eye adjourns them. Well, one of the more fantasy, one of the more elaborate jerseys. Room's down being Rinsa. called. Unsure for what reason. I didn't see anything in particular that would have called for a Brooms down on the pitch. We'll find out soon. Let's find out if a call is going to be made. Oh, just a scoreboard check. The wind, the wind would have made the game 130-10. Eh, it's not that. Yet? Question mark? Malaga in bludgeon control, that obviously means Basel can't just storm it into the front. Uh, and that will be a turnover to Malaga, who have a lot of open road ahead of them, but don't go for it. Oh no, there was still a Basel Peter in the back. Oh well. The purple bludger is slightly hard to see against <laughs> the darker parts of the jersey. Good camouflage there from, uh, well, not really the team, but the bludger. Well done, bludger. And Malika making a break for it. Can they drive through? A pass and the pass misses. Some confusion with the assistant refs, though, whether that was good or not. But the head ref. And we have and a brooms, uh, brooms down. down. Ah, the yeah. question is, did the quaffle go over the line, which would have made it a boundary call, which would have been a turnover? And because of the inbounding rules, that also means the ball has to be inbounded, so it's not really a keeper ball, which means Malaga can challenge it as soon as the ball is inbounded. Will be interesting if they choose to do that. There seems to be some more confusion on the pitch. And we seem to be restarting. With Basel in possession, Malika still trying to go for it, yep. but the keeper has the quaffle. We hear, so hear some chance of Hopschwitz and Cowbells from the left side of the pitch. Some of Swiss national teams, devoted fans. And again, everyone always telling me, Austria, isn't that the one with the Cowbells? Nope, that's the Swiss. Miss scoring opportunity by the Basilisks here. That will be Malaga keeper ball. And they see an opportunity. They're running ahead. Malika in bludger control, the other bludger far away, yes. so an easy scoring opportunity there for Malika. This is how you drive it, 40-10 for Malaga. Yeah. This is more the speed of the game we expected. Basel doing a very solid job though, more than was to be expected. But yeah, Malaga do seem like the better team so far, Chula, what would you say? Yes, I do think looking at the score, but also looking at the pitch and the, the pace and defense on pitch that Malika seems to make the most out of their opportunities where Basel is having a little bit more trouble converting their quaffle possessions into scores. But they're giving it a real good try here. The beater game is so explosive in both directions, but that shot attempt goes directly into the arms of Malaga's keeper. And Malika again making a fast break. A pass perfectly positioned, Wonderful. and once more, a goal. Malaga 50, Basel 10. Um, all the lovely passing game would normally lead me to say, we know Spain is a handball country, but I mean, technically, Switzerland is also a handball country, so I don't know what to say here. I'll take your word for that. Good beat by Malaga here. That will probably lead to a pressing situation relatively quick. Oh, wonderful try. But the ball is too high, and so the well, call goes back to Malaga. Malaga taking it slightly slower this time. Basel having time to get their defense in position. Let's see if that makes a, a noticeable difference. It's there's a pretty good reason why they're taking it slowly as far as I can tell. The bl Oh no, the bludge control is decisively with Malaga. So yes, okay, yes, good. they yes. were definitely <laughs> in control there. They're trying some napalm here. Their beater moving up the pitch without a bludger, trying to harass the other beater with a bludger on the Basel team. 
but it does not seem to work yet. Uh, a bad pass, but the and last one goes through. 60-10. Once again, number 38, Zim. Okay. I hope I didn't mispronounce that, because I do feel like an X is pronounced differently in Spanish. I think, could it be Rim or something? I don't know. <laughs> we'll, I guess we'll never find out. So we definitely see some pressing by the Malaka beaters, trying to make it difficult for Basel Basilisks to move up the pitch. But Basel actually playing this pretty well. Malaga can't really get a grip on them. They're still in quaffle possession. Ah, good attempt at a shot, but yeah, easily saved by Malaga. That final shot, what? It was there's certainly a possibility for that shot to go through. That that, that shot was very like very well very well timed, good speed. Well, just missed it. But that was a good plan by Basel, good thinking. We continue to see the Malaka keeper having the quaffle possession when they are making their drives. Will he make? Yes, and there he goes again. Another goal. Easiest pie apparently that should make the game. Uh, is it still 60-10? I've lost count, sadly. But <laughs> Basel seems to have managed to regain bludger control. It's 70-10. Okay, it's 70-10. Yeah, Basel, they're so not out of this. So perhaps together with their two bludgers, they will manage to turn this into a scoring opportunity. We see their chasers spreading out, getting themselves ready to receive any passes that might potentially come their way. A bludger thrown back. Basel still in the bludger possession. Nice challenge by him again. Pass to the middle. This should be... Oh, massive save. Goal ref still says goal, but the other refs don't know. Um, I don't well, know. That seems we're not, we're not getting a call, so we're going to assume they've decided it was not a goal. Yeah. I also thought that it was saved through the hoop, which, well, keepers allowed to do that. But a very good attempt by Basel. And yeah. 10 minutes have been played. And again, Quaffo in possession of the Malaka keeper. And Basel well, still in bludger control. They seem to move slower. I think they've definitely seeing the bludger control in the defense, figuring they won't go straight through. Their beaters trying to clear the way. And a beat. Nice beat, and that is an opportunity for Basel. They have to drive it through, even with the one beater there. Okay, they decided against it. Fair call. Waiting for their beaters to take that last one out. Keeper goes in the way, and that's almost a turnover, and it is a turnover, and there is nothing but open field ahead. Night. Yeah, and that seems to have gone through again. 80-10 for Malaga there, but I, 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 I can't fault Basel for any of this. That was, that was the plan, that was the way to go. The keeper did manage turnover. to catch up in defense, but unfortunately, the Malaka keeper still had the opportunity to make a nice goal from far. And Basel are taking a timeout right now. We have a Basel timeout now. Probably not the worst idea. Um, 80-10 is a, um, sort of an unusual score if, you, if you're not in need of a timeout for exhaustion reasons, which I don't think Basel are. They have a pretty moderately sized squad. Yes, um, they seem to definitely have enough people to be able to deal with this kind of game. No. We have seen in the past, both at this tournament and at other tournaments, that a timeout can make all the difference Absolutely. in a game. So perhaps we will see after this timeout a change in the game with Basel trying something new. Hopefully they will manage to close up that gap a bit because with 80-10, once the snitch comes on, there's little you can do except defend. That's true. Uh, tactically, it seemed they were on the right foot, so maybe they took the timeout and are going like, see what we did on the last drive? That's a start. That's where we can build off of. And uh, well, just let's do more of that and maybe tweak one or two things. I mean, yeah, that's certainly a possibility for all that. On the other hand, Malika seems to seem to be in great control of this game, so their timeout will probably be more geared towards keeping up with their current game. There's not much changes that they will probably be considering to make looking at the current score. Yeah, like Malaga, they'll just be, well, we're just going to stand around for a minute now, huh? 
<laughs> Isn't that like a direct quote from Passos, former coach uh, <laughs> Peter Bogner, who's now the Austrian team, uh, Team Austria's national head, uh, Team Austria's uh, head coach, whatever. Well, I if nothing else, <laughs> a timeout is always a nice mental break. You can just kind of sure. take it easy for a bit. We've got the referees moving back on pitch, getting ready to restart this game with Quaffle possession with Basel. And let's see what they do with it. Bludger control with Malika Vikings, making it hard for them to get through there. However, they seem to be getting annoyed by the Basel beaters a bit. I mean, that's their job. That's what they should do. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be enough to get the Quaffle players through to the hoops. Still taking it easy, passing left to right, not moving up a whole lot. Sure. Good challenge here by a beater number 99. Is beat out relatively easily, though. Uh, it's entirely possible Basel have changed their strategy to this, where I'd be saying, oh, probably <laughs> the one before looked more promising. But I mean, they can still score a goal out of this and prove me wrong. I mean, there's always the option if they see in a bit that what they're currently trying isn't working. There's always That's the option to try with the old strategy again. Also, it's entirely possible their change in plan depends on the bludger control and they just need to get that back, which, well, they that was a nice challenge, but it didn't do much, sadly. Long shot try. No. Easily. Does not seem to have gone through. Yeah. So this is still Malaga's game, uh, pretty obviously. Number 38, keeper from Malaga, doesn't seem to have subbed out this entire game yet. Yeah, I, th I feel like we've seen uh, we him the entire time. Oh, marvelous beat by Basel here, but it does leave their defense a little open. Nice pass, Quaffle behind the hoops, oh. and a great save there by the Basel keeper. Gorgeous save by one of the Wisses on the team, Alexander Wiss, team captain. I, I, I seem to recall that they had, they do have three players with the surname of, oh, four players with the surname of Wiss, and I've been told by someone none of them are related. I don't know if that's still true. <laughs> one of the fun facts provided by, us, by the team is that the Basel keeper seems to prefer fast and speedy drives. Unfortunately, we do no. not seem to be seeing that in this game. Lovely pass. I thought that went through. Apparently it didn't, but this one went through. 90-10 for Malaga. Bludger control doesn't seem to be moving away from Malaga anytime soon. And the chaser loses their quaffle, being beat out. And a fast break by Malaka. And a clean goal. Malaga 100, Basel 10. Whatever momentum Basel had built up, whatever ideas Basel had, uh, I feel like we're starting to see that break down a little. Current game time being 14 minutes, so there's a bit of time left until Snitch comes on pitch. Mm -hmm. But I doubt that it's going to make the 90 point difference. Yeah, it also doesn't seem very likely that those um, needed six goals will come from any fast breaks anytime soon with Malaga having firm control of Bludgers. And yeah, a turnover a to Malaga. There is some defense in the Basel half though. No goal. Yeah, no, no goal. good. Chaser seems to have been beaten out as well after, so no one else left. Some heads running a little hot here on the Malaga side, but beater number seven, Barani, um, yeah, telling his teammates uh, to calm down, yeah. And here we see Basel in control of the Quaffle again. Number 77, Karina, trying to gain some speed and momentum. Yeah. But loses the quaffle to Malaka. Back to the keeper. And they're making a run for it. 
Basel already has one beater there. And another nice yeah, pass nice. followed by a goal by Malaka. In the background of the stream, I don't know if the viewers can see it, but we see Pressburg Phantom celebrating their win over Dublin Droyter Dragons. Dublin played pretty good day one, but the small squad size, well, that just takes something out of you. Yes, playing with so few subs, it's always very hard, especially at the end of day two when you've yes. played that <laughs> many games already. So back from my favorite topic, Ireland, to this game. Bas Basilisk, a fast break with the number 18, ball goes over the hoops. Very unfortunate, that looked like it would have been an amazing goal if that went through. Yeah. There seems to be a boundary call. Yeah, strong challenge from Moira Reisel and apparently that did the trick. But that will be a reset. back to Basel, some struggle. Some and Basel continues in possession, being beat out, so Quaffo goes to Malaka. And that leaves some room for him. And, yeah, another and he's through. He's running again. Another speedy drive running straight through that defense. Good making challenge. Yeah. An amazing pass. Yeah. 120 to 10. <sighs> it, it, you feel bad for Basel because they are adapting. They are trying new things. They are doing what they can, but they are just outmatched here by the Spanish team. Sometimes it's unfortunately just not enough. We see here at 17 minutes the snitch coming on pitch. Sven Schmidt of East Germany of uh, USV Jena. He actually has the logo of the, the, the crest of the club on his snitch kit. Yeah. German viewers will know him. Good try here by Basel, but beat out. And this will be a no bludger situation, and that will be number 38, Kim. Another speedy run. Chaser being beat out. Keeper tr giving a valiant try and managing to save and for yes, now. And yes, that will be. No, I think that one crossed the line already. And even if it didn't, it's a keeper ball. Oh, it crossed the Either line already. Either way, it's a basal ball by now. Yeah. Seekers getting ready to sprint onto pitch. There they go. Well, yeah, Basel obviously will have to defend for now. But Malaka beaters being on snitch, they seem to want to end this quickly, beating out their opposition, giving their seekers a clear way to the snitch. Meanwhile, Basel making a valiant try there, being beat out, Quaffo going back to the keeper on the Malaka side. Basel going for the cold catch, apparently. Um, can't really fault them. It doesn't look too promising on either side of them. Yeah. At 110 against 10, if you don't feel like you're going to catch up, yeah. cold catching can give you at least a very interesting way of ending the game on your terms. Seeker for Malaga now, number one, Sergione. And a quaffle again in possession of Malaga, making a speedy drive, a pass to their throw, and it seems to have been a bit high going almost out of there. But quaffle back to Basel. Some and we see a drive here by the Basel keeper being held off by the Malaka beater. He doesn't seem to be able to get through there. Loses the quaffle and picked up by the Malaka chasers. So far, it's almost been nothing but Basel on the snitch game so far, which is very interesting. But the bludger control, I think, has moved to Malaga. And now there's a window of opportunity for Sergione for the Vikings to end this game on their own terms. Valiant effort by Sven Schmidt, though, who keeps Malaga Seeker by one arm, give, making him... Well, that's, that's got to be tough for him. On the other hand, if the snitch is holding your arm that much, they will not have their arms free to defend you in other ways. So there might be a way to get around that as we see yeah. the Seeker trying there. But Sven Schmidt gets another broom for his collection. And a missed goal there by Malaka. Ball going out into the warming up Vienna players. <laughs> and back to Basel. Oh, we have some Swiss fingerprints on the snitch tag. The number 77, Karina Zilla. Oh, yeah, the former Ruppert girl. <laughs> oh, woman, pardon me, sorry. And Basel losing their quaffle, but Malaka seems to take it safe. Almost a catch again. 
Bye, Karina. That's the thing. That's the diff. I mean, that's the difficult thing about Sven Schmidt's current seeking snitch running tactics. It does leave him open to a cold catch as soon as Karina comes in. Oh, I think we have a catch. We have a catch. An amazing Valiant jump effort. there, being caught in the snitch, jumping around and making an amazing catch there. Let's hope. That was a clean one. Jesus Christ, that could have almost like spun out his bones out of his arm, but somehow he made it. Refs busy discussing what the call is going to be here. Current score being 110, Malaka 10, Basel. We do have a replay here of the scene. Hanging down, completely stuck by that snitch and managing to get their momentum yeah, over twisting them. himself around. Amazing, amazing. We did not have a back view, so it's entirely possible there was something fishy there, but the rest will have seen it. And we're just waiting for their call. Still busy, and the ref seems to walk away. Um, yeah. Catch is good. And the, the catch, catch is good. The catch is good, and the catch is marvelous. That makes it 140 to 10 for Malaka Vikings, who, while dropping out in the first round, still managed to win every game today, giving themselves ninth place. They're not going to be happy, but they can be proud of themselves for what they have achieved on day two. And also, Joel, I think you'll agree with me. Let's give a hand to Basel Basel. Yes, definitely. They might not have made that many qualifier points, but they definitely gave it a valiant try. And absolutely, like you could see how how much they were outmatched in physicality and, let's frankly, experience. They still tried to adapt. They tried to do whatever they could do. They gave it a very good effort, and I think the entirety of Switzerland can be proud of the Basilisks. Certainly, looking forward to what Switzerland will manage next year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I'm trying to figure out if we have an analyst's desk and if we have one, when I can give back to them. We still have. We can still talk about this game a little more. Valiant effort again, as said by Basel. Some awesome passing game by the Malaga Vikings. I, if, if they don't have like six players with handball backgrounds, then I don't know what is. Yeah, we definitely <laughs> saw the keeper being in control of the quaffle a lot of times, but their chasers always being perfectly positioned behind the hoops to receive the pass, catch it cleanly, and make a nice goal straight after. Yeah, there was some wonderful, like for new teams watching, there was some wonderful like basic passing game, how things can work, how you can position yourself. It was just it was just super clean. It was just super, super clean passing. It was a joy to behold and yeah, I'm happy I got to watch this game. Glad I'm happy I got to commentate this game. And here on the side, I think it's just outside of the view of the live stream. We have both Vienna and Augsburg warming up together it seems yeah they, they seem to be getting ready for a nice friendly next yeah. match there is some history between this team uh augsburg former head coach i don't know if he's still head coach matthias renner uh, he is originally from mödling which is outside of vienna uh well like basically like a vienna suburb he'll probably punch me in the face for saying that but um yeah he's moved switched to augsburg since he works and lives in the general bavarian swabia area and I feel like his addition to Augsburg Owls really made a difference to the team. I mean, no one, a couple of years ago, or maybe one year ago, no one would have expected them to play a European game and probably at least can't play for a bronze medal. Yes, so the next game will be the bronze medal game, if I'm not mistaken. It certainly seems so with them warming up. So definitely for all of our viewers at home, stay tuned for the bronze medal match between Vienna Vanguards and Augsburg Owls. Yeah, um, we're probably going to move over. Yeah, we see the analyst desk getting ready, so we're going to move over to that. I was Richard Tukovic. And I was Sheila Brüchling. Thank you.